Good morning. Um, okay, I guess I need to stand here. Uh, good morning. My name is Rachel Carden. I'm a web developer and designer uh, from the University of Alabama. And I'm excited to be here today to talk about accessibility. It's something that I'm um, very passionate about and I very much believe in and support. And uh, so I'm excited today to kind of talk about some tools and techniques that you can do that are really easy to implement to um, evaluate your website um, for accessibility. Um, so what is accessibility? Um, basically, at the very you know, base principle of it is just a practice of removing barriers. And the, with the goal of um, having accessible content for everyone, no matter their disabilities. And so uh, anything from images to videos um, to colors, um, there's a wide spectrum of content and functionality on your website where um, you could be excluding someone from accessing because of a certain disability or need. I love, I don't know if you watched the Grammys this week, but there was a great moment with Stevie Wonder and he, um, he was calling out a, a winner for, I don't remember what, but um, his, the uh, winner was written in Braille, and he made this great moment and great teaching moment in the Grammys about how we need to make every single thing accessible to every single person. And that is kind of at the heart of accessibility and what we do, um, trying to make all content available to everyone on the web. And I know we've all kind of heard the mantra that information you know, wants to be free, um, but I truly believe that information needs to be accessible. Um, if we want it to be free to everyone, then it needs to be accessible. And so there are things that we can do as web developers and designers to make sure that our information and our content is accessible. Um, because data does show that one in five of your users um, has some kind of disability. So you could be excluding 20% of potential users, um, clients, um, or students if you're an educator. Um, you could be excluding your information or your lessons or whatever, your products, your services, um, from 20% um, of people. And I was having a great conversation yesterday with someone about accessibility and they pointed out that, you know, we, we will fight tooth and nail to make sure our websites look good for like old versions of Internet Explorer. You know, that's like 5% of your users are using crappy old Internet Explorer and we go out of our way to make it work for them. Um, but 20% of our users um, have some kind of disability and therefore we should be fighting to make our content uh, work for them as well. There are two general um, accessibility standards. Uh, I am in higher education, which means um, I receive federal funding. Not all higher education does, but mine does, the public university, which means that we are required by law to meet Section 508 standards. Um, there are also WCAG 2.0, which is the current um, standards from the web content, uh, from the, sorry, from WC3. Um, and so, they are not all that different. Um, Section 508 is kind of similar um, to a certain level of 2.0. 2.0 has three levels, uh, A, AA, and AAA. Um, usually we try to strive for AA. Um, AAA is really nice, and we should all want to be AAA, um, but it is a little more difficult, but it's not impossible. And so I kind of wanted to go over a few of the very kind of broad level accessibility things that you can do. Um, all non-text content needs to have some kind of text equivalent. This largely um, involves images and videos. So um, if you are blind and you are navigating a website and there's an image um, or a video, but the image does not have a text equivalent, say a caption or an alt attribute, um, then that person is missing out on that content that you thought important enough to place on your website. Um, especially with videos, if there's no caption, um, then, I'm sorry, this goes more for deaf people, sorry. Um, if there is no um, caption, then uh, if you made a 20 minute tutorial on how to do something, or some, you know, then they're missing out on that information because they can't hear it. Um, here's some just quick examples. Also like, you know, infographics are real, you know, they were really big and they still kind of are. Um, if you are blind, and you put a bunch of you know, helpful information in an infographic and um, someone who's blind may not be able to read out that text that you placed in that graphic. So um, you can provide a text equivalent so that they can read all that information. 
And so a great example of this that I, always, that I like to share is, I'm from Alabama where tornadoes are a big, or, big ordeal. And this is actually a graphic that's on like a, a National Weather Service site um, for us. And it's basically you know, how to you know, be safe during a tornado. Um, but there's no text equivalent for this. This is all text in a photo. Um, so someone who is blind would not be able to read this information and they're missing out on like life-saving information that was not accessible to them. Another big one that people don't think about a lot is color contrast. Um, people that are colorblind um, can have a lot of issues on websites. Um, you need to make sure that you provide sufficient contrast with your colors. Um, and so a big example that I like um, to share is um, links. Um, basically, we need to make sure that color um, that conveys information or direction is not color only. And so, basically, a lot of people will like to have links on their site just be a color. But what if you were colorblind and maybe you don't see blue? You wouldn't see that link. It wouldn't stand out to you. Um, and so there needs to be more than just color. There needs to be, say, an underline. Um, there needs to be something that makes a link stand out besides just color. And this goes to any other information. If you have some kind of alert or something, or, and it's, you know, it's, it's only imp notified by the color red or something, um, that could be missed on someone who, say, can't see the color red. Um, and so if they were colorblind, they would at least see the line. So it's something to think about as we design and stuff like that. Um, pages need to have proper heading structure, like H1s, H2s, paragraphs, all that stuff. Some people actually um, navigate websites with basically stripped of CSS. So your website needs to be understandable and readable if someone is not have CSS turned on. They're, and this also goes to things like screen readers. Um, people that are blind depend on screen readers that literally read websites to them. If your page does not have proper structure, it's confusing. Also, um, some people can't use a mouse and have to navigate your website with a keyboard or another input device. And so uh, we, have to, we need to make sure that like, our navigation is, navi we can navigate with a tab button, basically. That's the big one. But um, so just making sure, I mean, just sitting down on your website and, and hitting the tab button and see if users could tab through all the links in the menus and navigate your site simply using the tab. Um, but a big foundation of accessibility is that really it's, it's just a lot of good markup. It's just good HTML. It's good practice. And so you're, you're, it's a win-win. Your website's good. It also improves your SEO when you have good markup. So a lot of accessibility is good SEO. Um, and so uh, just kind of working on that alone can make a huge difference. There are, there are a lot of accessibility stuff, and so... Um, I wanted to share these checklists that you can use that, um, that WebAIM made that are really great and they kind of walk you through each, uh, each standard, the 508 and the WCAG, and shows you, it does a really good job of showing you each individual thing that they check for and talk about how to fix it and stuff like that. And I'll have these slides online later um, if you want to just wait, um, I'll, t I'll tweet it out or something. So now I wanted to um, uh, kind of jump into the tools um, the really great thing about accessibility is, yeah, it's, it can be a little complicated, but we have a lot of great tools that can help us, that can help you get a large part of the way. And I will say this, that even, um, that even though we have all these tools and we have all this software and stuff that helps, um, we, it always still needs like a human touch and it still needs usability testing and it still needs some of this stuff. Um, so I, I do not recommend solely depending on some of these tools to do everything um, and basically always test and, and um, experiment. Um, if you can do any kind of actual um, usability testing with people helping you out with disabilities, that's always a big, that's always very helpful. Um, so I'd recommend that. So up first is a big one, uh, the WAVE tool. Uh, WebAIM is a big, um, a big kind of uh, advocate for accessibility. They do a lot of cool stuff and they made this tool and it tests for Section 508 and um, single and double A. They pro basically, it's in browser testing, which is really great because you either pull up their website and you put in your URL and it shows you. Um, they also have a Chrome, there's also a Chrome extension um, and they have an, they have an API if you, um, that's, that's paid, it's not free. It's really cheap though, it's like pennies for each test. 
Um, but it, it will basically give you results via, I think, JSON. And so then you can do something with that. Um, but if you don't need all that, they, the, what they provide for free is still pretty good. And so I was gonna pull it up and uh, show you real quick. So. Not the best thing to go on the other screen. Anyone have a particular website they want to test? We'll test WordPress.org. It's not that bad. Let me make this screen big. And so um, they do a good job, sorry, they do a good job over here of showing you how many errors. There's two errors, um, six alerts, which need stuff that needs to be looked at. Um, they actually implement six features and um, they use some ARIA stuff. Um, ARIA is um, attributes you can add to your HTML that kind of help uh, with accessibility and kind of basically it's like labeling like this is my navigation and this is a search field and this is a so it kind of helps uh, screen readers and other devices kind of understand what your HTML is supposed to be doing um, in order to help the user um, interact with your website so uh, and so then they have they possibly have some contrast errors and you can come down here and they actually list them out and you click on them and find them. They have an empty button. Um, they have an empty link. Um, I think they have some, I remember correctly, they had some structuring error issues in the sense that they have like a, basically it'll tell you if you have an H1 and then you skip to an H4. That's a problem. Where's the H2s and the H3s? It needs to go in order. Um, so it helps you kind of point that out and you know, it helps you point out if there's no all attributes and stuff like that and really gives um, a lot of information and really helps you out so you can go in and um, uh, clean it up. And so over here is the Chrome. Uh, if we, let's say you just had your website pulled up or you had a, a website pulled up. You could just go over here and click this button and it pops up. So really easy, really quick. You don't have to put anything on your website. You just have to pull it up in a browser. Um, makes it really easy to jump in and, and see how your website's doing. Oop. I keep pressing the play button and it doesn't want to do it. I apologize. Here we go. Um, next is this uh, kind of new uh, script popped up. I think it was last year. It's pretty cool. It's called Totally. Um, if you are a Twitter person, uh, a11y is the kind of shortened nickname for accessibility and it's the hashtag we use to talk about accessibility. So hashtag A11y. So that's where totally comes from. And actually there's a couple other tools that use the A11y as well. And basically it stands for, there are 11 letters between A and Y and that's why it's A11y. Um, accessibility is a long word. <laughs> but totally is pretty cool. It's just a JavaScript file that you put on your website. And what it does is it adds a button to the bottom left corner. So really it's more for development environments. It's not something you'd really put on your public site unless you're just wanting to add, you know, wanting to have some accountability, I guess, from your users uh, for accessibility. Um, but it adds a little button and then you click the button and like a little report pops up and it tells you, it talks about um, all the attributes, um, color contrast, heading structure. Um, it makes sure that your form labels are accessible and it checks and basically just tells you if you're using any ARIA landmarks. And so it's really handy. Um, there is also, if you don't want to actually put it on your, on your uh, website, I don't know why I closed it. There is actually a Google extension for that as well, so I can show you really quick what it is. So basically, I click this button. Here is the totally pops up. I click on it. So there's a couple of heading problems on this, on their site. Um, it checks for color contrast and even tells you what the ratios are. Um, basically, the ratios depend on size. So it's not just a matter of, like, you may have good contrast, but your font is really small, and so you need to have better contrast when it's really small. And it's more, f it's more flexible if your text is really large. Um, so I will say this, that some of the color contrast stuff it's, that they test, it's not, a, it's not always 100%. Um, it's, uh, but there are color contrast checkers that you can literally go in and say this is the background color and this is the foreground color and it'll tell you if it, it's a pass or fail. And I have a link for that at the end 
um, that you can go and so double check. Um, don't always depend on um, these contrast checkers. Tells you, you know if, if there's any link text. Um, something else that's thank you, David. Um, something else that's really important for accessibility um, about links is that um, links need to have clear um, context. So like click here is not real is not is really bad for accessibility. And I'll explain why. Imagine if um, you're using a screen reader, you're dependent on a screen reader um, to read a website aloud to you, and you come up, you come up to a click here, um, you have no idea what click here does. And then let's say you even, you know, and then you click it, and then you get there and realize that's not what you wanted. You have to go back, and you have to read the last page all over again. Um, so click here is not helpful, um, and it's, it. Links need to have clear um, direction as to where you're going when you click on the link. You know, visit our programs page or learn more about our programs. Um, that's much more helpful um, for everyone. And also, so also it'll check for like blank text. Um, I'm sorry, blank links. Um, if you have links that repeat, so you have the same link right next to each other. Um, you know, a lot of us will have like the logo is a link, and then right next to it we have our name written out, and that's a link. Um, it's that repetitiveness can be really confusing for accessibility um, because they're having to, their screen readers and stuff like that are having to read that aloud back to back to back. And so um, if you can try to keep, you know, not having those repetitive links. Um, checks for alt attributes um, and then tells you when they're using uh, um, ARIA landmarks. Totally, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, another really fun tool to use is Code Snipper. Um, it is a client-side script that checks your source code. Um, it checks for Section 508, um, and it checks all three levels of WCAG 2.0. They offer a kind of variety of, of tools as well uh, that I will show you. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a popular one. Um, a lot of developers really like, you're welcome. A lot of developers really like this one. And it's kind, of, it's kind of new to me. I've only recently started using it, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And then I've discovered that other tools are actually using this as their like, back end. Um, and so it's clearly a lot of people uh, really like this tool. Let me... So this is their website, and even on here, um, it's all their code is on GitHub. Um, so you can even like go on here and you can paste some just some little snippets of code. Like if you don't want to test the whole entire web page, you can go on here and just paste some code here, and um, pick which level you want to test against, and uh, it'll give you the results. Um, there is also a they have a bookmarklet which I put up here. So you just get this bookmarklet, drag it up here, and then say. Well, we're going to keep picking on WordPress because um, we can. Go up here and click Code Sniffer, and this little thing pops up and tells you your errors, uh, your warnings, and things like that, which is pretty cool. And you can even uh, view the more extensive report. So what's really great about all these tools is you don't have to necessarily be putting stuff on your site. Um, you can just, all you need is Chrome. There's also some Firefox stuff. Um, it's just a little harder. It's it's. It, it, they live more in Chrome, but there is some Firefox stuff if that's your main browser. Um, so this is really great. The stuff at your at your fingertips is really quick to check. Um, you don't have to be putting any files and stuff like that in your um, in your site. If you are uh, the kind of person who wants to kind of um, put some stuff in your like basically I guess your development workflow and things like that, um, there are tools for that as well. It just kind of depends on how deep you want to go. I'm so sorry mirroring is confusing me. Um, Pally is another great tool and they I offer like a really great variety of um, tool sets for you to use and they also test against all the standards. Uh, they provide a dashboard that you can basically you can download and like self host and then it basically gives you all this great reporting information and I, they even have a demo that we can they have a demo that we can pull up So and it's all open source and it's all free. 
and um, you can sit here and try out the dashboard demo. And so basically what you do is you go in and you just put in, you put in different URLs that you want to check. And then it has this nice dashboard that shows you um, a kind of a glimpse into your errors and such. And so Twitter is, is, is feeling rough. But <laughs> you can go in here and see a more detailed uh, report of everything. And then you can download um, different files. You can show different s dates. So you can kind of see how progress you've made. Um, which is which is what this is up here. So, uh, you know, basically sometime between February 18th, basically this is probably when they set this up. Um, you, so you can, it's really nice in the sense that you can see progress. You know, maybe I didn't, I didn't, you know, my site's not completely 100% accessible, but I improved like 40% of it today and tomorrow I'll, I'll keep working. Um, so this is a really, um, really nice tool. They also have, and get back to the, they also have a web service you can set up that basically just prints out um, your information as a JSON um, API, essentially, that you can use. Um, and they also have it where you can run it in, in the command line, which is, you know, for all the little command line terminal nerds in here that like to um, do that. And I actually have it um, pulled. So basically, you can oh, only see it if you're me. Here we go. Um, you can come in here and basically uh, you type Pally and wordpress.org and hopefully it works because earlier it was being weird. Here we go. And it shows you all the information. Um, and by default it checks for WCAG 2.0 AA, um, but you can actually go in here and change the standard. Um, so I think that, I think you type Pally uh, let me double check. The great thing is that it's all, hold on, standard, here we go, I'm gonna copy and paste it. So, you can change the standard to say section 508, and then, you know what, I'll pull up my university's website. So now, um, it's changed to the standard that we have to follow, and it's looking, and it's looking, it's trying. We have faith in you. And there we go. So we only have two errors. So we have some work to do. 166 warnings. We have some work to do. And <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, there you go. Good grief. Um, it, it's going and going and going. Um, I think you can even, from the command line, print out a CSV file and do all that stuff. So Pally's really cool, and what's really great is that it is open source and free, and you can take advantage of it. They use, um, they use HTML code sniffer, so uh, um, that's a great tool that I would definitely uh, recommend checking out. I also really, I, like, I love the dashboard thing, the fact that you, if you want to self-host that. So like, at UA, we could do that. Um, you know, we could self-host our own dashboard, and we could put all the university websites on there, and have this really great um, overview of how accessibility is, you know, doing on our campus. Um, so, you know what? I may actually go do that when I get back. Um, Axe is another great tool. Um, it's just it's kind of similar to Totally in that it's a JavaScript file. Um, it pretty much literally is just a JavaScript file that you can use to um, uh, print out the errors. So like you can go in and be like, print the errors to the console and stuff like that. So it is neat. Um, it's made by um, DQ, uh, which is, they do a lot of accessibility work. So um, lots of kudos to them for making this available. Um, also Axe, um, you can use it um, in, your, um, in your developer tools in Chrome. Uh, so you can, you can come over here and we can basically go into our console and here is an X. And so you can analyze this page. Thankfully, Pally's website has no accessibility violations. <laughs> that would have been very embarrassing for Pally. Um, but <laughs> uh, so that's another, another way that you can run some quick um, tests on your site. So if we, you know, picked on WordPress again, we would see a lot of the very same, you know, very similar problems. You know, buttons, and it kind of gives you some information. 
Uh, if, you, if you want more info, there's a link and you can learn about the particular problem and how to fix it, which is really nice. Um, so if you don't quite understand why it's a problem, it'll help you, un help you learn, help you figure that out, um, which is really nice. Thank you, X. And so also you can, from here, you can click the right arrow and it'll, it tells you if it's a critical problem or if it's just kind of a warning um, and you can arrow through them and then you have to click down here. Also, you click, click expect, inspect, sorry, and it will jump to the code. So it's a pretty handy tool. Um, I use it a fair amount. I definitely recommend that one. Um, there are also a couple WordPress plugins, um, both made by the same person. Um, WP Accessibility um, tries to help you fix some common issues um, in your theme. And Access Monitor um, actually uses another tool called Tenon. Um, Tenon is another um, a tool you can use. It's a commercial tool, um, so it's not free, um, but it's still beneficial. Um, there, I, I, I include a link to a, an, an article I'd recommend reading about basically kind of comparing the free to the paid and the benefits and what you need and stuff like that. Um, there are very much benefits to some of the paid services. Um, generally, the big difference has been that usually the paid services, they offer pretty extensive reporting. And so it's like the ability to say, the service is going to go out and check my site and send me an email telling me when there are problems. And so if maybe um, you, maybe you're a one-man team doing a bunch of sites. Um, at my university, I have a portfolio of 60 websites. And so I can't sit down and manually check every single website for accessibility issues. Um, I would never get anything done. But uh, I do, we do use a service called Site Improve that scans our websites. And then I get a report, like every Monday, that tells me when there are issues so that I can go and fix them. Um, and so Tenon is like that. Um, there are other ones. Um, we're about to uh, implement a service called SSB BART. Um, and so there are a variety of tools, paid um, and free. Um, so it kind of depends on what you need and your resources and um, stuff like that. Wanted to mention some other uh, browser tools. Uh, there is just one accessibility developer tools, and it it basically it does put an audit nope. it does put an audit in your um, developer area, and I think it will it'll pull up some reports. It can be pretty helpful um, if you want to go check that one out. I'd also recommend um, installing some kind of screen reader. Um, Chromevox is is the common one in Chrome, but there are others. I'd, Chromevox isn't perfect. Um, but it's better, it might be better than nothing if um, you don't have any other options. Um, but it's quite, it's really quite interesting um, to, you know, to try and see what it's like for people that depend on screen readers to navigate your website. Um, it's really eye-opening um, to see. Uh, something else that's really helpful, FYI, um, is those skip to content type links that you'll sometimes see at the top of sites. If you've ever wondered what, what that's for, um, that allows people that depend on screen readers to skip over your header and jump straight to the information. Um, because can you imagine every time you visit a page having to be read the header every time you visit a page on someone's website? That will get a little old after probably the second, third page. Um, and so those links are really helpful. Um, they can save someone tons of time. Because um, also imagine if you went to a page that you, that's not what you were after. And you realize you get to the page and that's not what you need. You had to listen to the he entire header just to figure out um, you know, that that wasn't the information that you need. So those skip to content links that you can put in your header, um, those are really, really helpful. And so a few um, other uh, articles that I would recommend. Um, these talk about the different tools and kind of lay them all out for you and the pros and cons and things like that. And they t it, even, it mentions you know, much more tools than even I mentioned. I only have so much time. So I would recommend checking out these, um, these articles and reading more about the different tools available. And like, I'll, t I'll, tweet all this, I'll tweet these slides out um, if you don't get a chance to write that down. I'm Bama Designer. Um, some other resources, um, a color contrast checker that I mentioned earlier can be really helpful. Um, because like I said, the, the tools, they're not, it's not 100% reliable with color contrast because sometimes you, know, you, do, you do some funky things with design and maybe the tool can't, check, can't really pick up on that, what's actually behind something. Um, and so I'd, I always recommend um, double checking the color contrast. Um, and also if you want to learn more about, about ARIA, um, 
I would definitely check that out. It can be very helpful as well, like I said, to kind of um, help accessibility tools understand more what you are wanting to do with that section of your website. And last but not least, I want to do a pitch. Um, I work in higher education, and I have, uh, we have a community and a conference going for people that use WordPress in higher education or just education in general. And we just started, and you can learn more about us at wpcampus.org. And we actually have a conference planned this summer, July 15th and 16th in Sarasota, Florida. So I'll be back to Florida in, um, in July. So all you Florida residents, if you want to come up to Sarasota, um, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I have buttons, if anyone wants a button to put on their lanyard. Um, I, also have, I also have stickers. Uh, so if you want one, come and find me afterwards. Um, accessibility, like I mentioned earlier, is very important in higher education. Um, not only because we're required by law, but because you know we want um, we want our information to be accessible to everyone. We are trying we are trying to teach, and we're trying to educate, and we were trying to um, share what we our knowledge and all that. And we want to make sure everyone can consume it. Anyone questions? Just WP Campus. Uh, I'm Bama Designer on Twitter. Okay. Oh, the hashtag for accessibility is A11Y. I've never, I've never seen any. I've never seen any uh, browser tools for Safari. That doesn't mean they don't exist. Please prove me wrong. But I don't, I don't know of any. I'm sorry, it's gotten loud in here. I can't, I can't hear you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tools for analyzing an image? I, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know of any that are specific to just images. I'm, I would be surprised if they didn't exist, though. You're, you're very true. There could be instances where contrast, even though there's no text in an image or something, where the contrast could be, like, if the, informa if the information in the image is kind of color specific, you're very right. That, 